Hello and welcome to Dr. Z's Health Academy. In this video, I'm going to talk about treatment of wrinkling of the retina. If you saw my last video, I explained what is wrinkling of the retina, also known as epiretinal membrane or macular pucker. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about your treatment options if you have wrinkling of the retina. The first question you have to ask yourself is, how much does it bother you? And depending on how much it's affecting you and your quality of life will influence your option to seek treatment. If it's really not bothering you that much, then one option is to do nothing. In this case, it usually remains the same or slightly worse with time. It is rare, and I've never seen this, for a macular pucker or wrinkling of the retina to simply go away by itself. So doing nothing usually results in the condition staying the same, or in some cases getting slightly worse with time. And if the wrinkling in the retina is mild, and it's causing your vision to be mildly affected, then doing nothing can be considered a reasonable option. Think of it like a bad knee or a bad hip where it irritates you and it's a nuisance but it's something that you can live with. For those patients who have severe symptoms or who are bothered by it or perhaps need sharp eyesight to work and function at a high level, then we go on to our second option which is treatment. Some doctors will try eye drops as their first treatment. And eye drops do not remove the wrinkling of the retina. They do not remove the membrane on the surface of the retina that's causing the wrinkling. But in some cases, some doctors believe that eye drops may decrease some of the retinal swelling associated with wrinkling of the retina and may help some patients see a little bit better. But the definitive treatment for wrinkling of the retina is surgery to remove the wrinkling of the retina. So let me see if I can show you. Sorry about that. What surgery really involves. So first of all, surgery has to be done in the operating room and patients are often awake but sedated and relaxed. The eye is numb so that you don't feel any pain. And the name of the surgery that's performed is called vitrectomy. It's called vitrectomy surgery. And we get that name because it involves removal of the vitreous gel, which is this cavity in the back of the eye. So let's, let's review. This is the front of the eye here. This is the lens of the eye, and then back here is the back of the eye and the retina. As we discussed in the first video, the macula is the center of the retina, and in wrinkling of the retina, there's often a little membrane or scar tissue right here on the surface of the macula. So with the vitrectomy surgery done in the operating room, instruments are inserted into the eye, the vitreous gel which is clear in this picture, is removed, and then instruments are inserted to peel away this membrane on the surface of the retina. As you might imagine, it is delicate surgery because you want to peel away this membrane without damaging the underlying retina. I tell patients that it's like peeling a label off of a wine bottle. You want to peel the label and try to get as much of the sticky label off but leave the underlying bottle alone. Sometimes we get lucky and we peel the membrane and it comes off in one piece, like the label coming off in one piece, or sometimes the label shreds and you have to pick at it and keep peeling and peeling as best as you can. Now the benefits of surgery are the removal of the membrane and recovery of the vision. Oftentimes patients do not get 
100% of the vision back when the membrane is removed. I believe that successful retinal surgery often results in 50% of the vision coming back. Sometimes you get a little bit more, sometimes you get a little bit less. Hard to predict because everybody heals differently. But I would think a successful surgery will often result in about 50% improvement in the symptoms. So those are the benefits of surgery. And we'll put here, surgery has benefits. And whenever you're contemplating having surgery for any condition, you should always ask your doctor, what are the benefits? And then of course, what are the risks? And with vitrectomy surgery, there are some risks. And let's see, maybe I'll choose red for risks. So probably the most common risk, and I'll start with this one at the top, is cataract formation. So let's review, this is the lens of the eye, which I'll circle again in red. And having any form of retinal surgery does often accelerate the formation of cataract, which means clouding of the lens of the eye. So if you're 60 years old, you may need cataract surgery at 65 or 70, or if you're lucky, 75 years old, as part of the natural aging process. However, if you're 60 years old and you have retinal surgery of any kind, you're likely to need cataract surgery within a year or two. It happens so frequently that we don't even consider this to be a risk, we just say this is what happens. But some of the other risks of retinal surgery include infection, detachment of the retina, which can often be fixed right there during surgery, eye pressure problems, high eye pressure or low eye pressure usually can be treated with drops, bleeding in the eye, which sometimes will clear up on its own, sometimes not. Then we say loss of vision from one of these complications perhaps, or even worst case scenario, loss of the eye. Now these complications that I've listed below is not a comprehensive list of every possible complication, but these are some of the more prominent ones that one has to think about. Infection, retinal detachment, eye pressure problems, bleeding in the eye, and of course loss of vision or loss of the eye. Now fortunately these complications are very very rare. So in many cases, if the patient is bothered by the wrinkling in the vision and visual distortion, then the benefits of surgery outweigh these very, very rare and small risks. But the purpose of this video is not to recommend to you a treatment option or to recommend to you surgery even, but to let you know that these are some of the things that go on with surgery and that it is important to have a conversation with your doctor about your eye and your particular circumstances, how surgery might affect you. So I hope that after watching this video, you have an idea of uh, what are your options if you have wrinkling of the retina.